Hello my beautiful YouTube friends. Today I bring you a review over Emerald Green by Kirsten Gear. Let me just get this out of the way ahead of time. Oh my word, this series was absolutely amazing. If you have not read Ruby Red or Sapphire Blue, please just continue watching this as this book is the conclusion to everything in this series and it just it's going to spoil you. So go and purchase not just Ruby Red, but Sapphire Blue and Emerald Green and read all of them. They are so addicting. All right, Emerald Green begins with the prologue, which of course is Paul and Lucy, and then it flips to the present day in chapter one, where Gwen is crying, she is all upset, she is devastated, she's brokenhearted, she's angry, she's feeling everything right now because of Gideon's betrayal, or what she thinks is his betrayal. Luckily, though, she has Zamarius and Lindsay there. Well, Lindsay's on the phone. Zamarius is a ghost. But she has them there, and they are talking to her. They're just bringing some fun situations into the conversation to lighten it up a bit for Gwen. Now, the next day, when she has to go to the Guardians to elapse with the chronograph, the first person she sees sitting on the stairs at the entrance to the building is Gideon. And Gideon wants to talk to her privately. And I saw this coming. He's talking to her and Gwen is thinking in her head, he wants to get back with me. He wants to be my boyfriend. He loves me. He was mistaken. He was lying. And then he says, hey, Gwen, you're a great girl. Let's be friends. And she says, what? What? Literally, I was sitting there going, yep, 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 this is happening, Gwen. This is ha you need to pay attention to this, Gwen. And it just kind of blew up in Gideon's face. Now, both of them looked really horrible that day. They both looked like they hadn't slept, and they both just, they weren't themselves. They needed to discuss this and tell each other what actually was going on. Now, everything kind of domino effects after this, and I really enjoyed that. A lot of things come to light. There were a lot of things that I was not expecting to take place in this book, and I just, it was really enjoyable. This series is so addictive. The characters, there is such a variety of characters from serious to scary, humorous to normal to weird and wacky and I just I loved everything that was taking place with these characters. The next is the writing. Yes, this last one was a little more jumpy. I felt like a lot of the parts of the book could have been fleshed out a little more, but overall I did enjoy this. I do have some questions that weren't fully answered but that is okay. The next thing is the timeline. The whole series takes place in seven days, you guys. Under seven days for this entire story, and I think that's why it is so easy to get through. Now, for those of you who have watched to this point and you've read up to the end of Sapphire Blue, don't watch anymore because this is going to be the spoiler part of this review. So just be aware, please do not get angry at me. I'm telling you spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. You will be spoiled. Okay, if you are still around and you have read Emerald Green, I am so happy to discuss this with you. I have put off reviewing this for so long because of the fact that I just, I want to be a little more relaxed and I know that's not going to happen. That is how much I enjoyed this book. I cannot act professional because I love this book so much. Alright, first off, the scene where Gwen dies and she's having that out of body experience and then she reawakens and she's just got a scratch in the present day. I was thinking, what is going on here? I'm so confused. I am so confused. And literally, the part in my head should have been ringing bells saying, you know, something's not right here. But in my mind, I was thinking, okay, so if you die in the past, you still come back to the present and you survive. But then I found out that that wasn't the case. And then later on in the book, you find out that Gwen is immortal. And I was thinking, really? We went this route with the story, okay? I wasn't expecting that. Then you find out that Gwen is not the shepherd's child. She is actually Paul and Lucy's daughter. I was not expecting that. But 
It makes sense when you look back to the prologue of Ruby Red. Lucy is upset and Paul mentions that Mrs. Shepard will take care of whatever they had left. And you're thinking it's an object or the people that were maybe chasing them when in reality they were upset because they had to leave their daughter behind. And oh my word, you guys, that was just a touching scene for me to just think back on. Now, I really enjoyed the whole timelines really being connected well because you have things taking place in the past and in the present. They'd work really well, especially because of the fact that Lucas and Gwen's conversations together take place in the past. And then in the present, when he sees her as a child, he already knows what is going to take place later on in her life. But he doesn't say anything about it to anybody. And you realize he could have to help the situation, but I don't think he wanted her to turn out like Charlotte. Because literally, what takes place with Charlotte just turns her into an evil mastermind. I was hopeful that she would maybe change, she would become a better person, she'd help Gwen a bit more. But no, she turns more evil than I was expecting. Now, one thing I want to ask you guys, and you're probably going to laugh your head off when I suggest this, but near the beginning of this book, all I kept picturing was the fact that Charlotte and Mr. Whitman would make the best couple because they both are so vindictive, nasty people. They just suited each other. Now, I you're probably laughing, aren't you? Did anybody else see that? Did anybody else think, oh, Charlotte, Mr. Whitman, they, they'd make a cute couple? No? Nobody else? Just me? Okay. Well, when it comes to light that Mr. Whitman is actually Count St. Germain, I was flabbergasted. I was not expecting that whatsoever. Finding out that he was Count St. Germain, plastic surgery, plastic surgery, darling, um, it works wonders. I was not expecting that, and it kind of played a little more humorous because he is such a nasty character that I should have realized at the beginning that Mr. Whitman was, like, probably part of Count St. Germain's group, which in reality he was because he was part of the Lodge. But um, yes, I was not expecting that whatsoever. Now let's talk about Raphael for a second. He comes in in Sapphire Blue and he does play a bit more of a major part in Emerald Green and I just wanted to mention one thing with regards to his character. He was so sweet. He really loved Lindsay and I really enjoyed that fact about him. The whole I kind of went on a date with another girl. Could you not tell Lindsay? That was so not obvious, Raphael. But I thought it was really interesting because Raphael, Lindsay, and Zamarius were probably my humor streak throughout this book. Every time they appeared, I knew that the part that they were playing was just going to be a lot of fun to read. Now, Zamarius, on the other hand, is hilarious in this one due to the fact that he does have times where he does narration and he just kind of goes off on very fun streaks for the narration and it was very enjoyable. Near the end when Darth Vader, I don't even know his actual name because literally I was, I I only picture him as Darth Vader now because of how she described him. But when Darth Vader comes out and says to her, I'm gonna haunt you for the rest of your life, I was thinking, get Samarius to eat him. And Gwen is like picturing different things. She's like, okay, this isn't so bad. All right, he's going to haunt me when I'm awake. He's going to haunt me when I'm asleep. He's going to haunt me when I'm brushing my teeth. He's going to haunt me when I'm showering. He's going to haunt me when I go on dates. He's going to haunt me when... And then you kind of see the direction where her thoughts go. And you think, no. And her character goes, no. And then Samarius turns to her and says, please. Can I eat him? And I'm like, yes, you can. Um, I just really enjoyed the scenes between Zamarius and her. Now, James, on the other hand, James, oh, she goes and literally terrifies the guy, but she goes and helps James. I thought that was so sweet. I really enjoyed James' interaction with Gwen. Not seeing him as a ghost anymore, but seeing him as a real live person, that was really interesting and I really enjoyed it. 
the whole scene with Gideon vaccinating James and Gwen kind of holding him at knife point, that was so much fun to read, and I'm really, really happy that that took place, because literally being held at knife point and being stabbed with something in your neck, not the most pleasant of events in your life. Now, Gideon, on the other hand, he played a very interesting part in this. Yes, sometimes you thought he was very thick-headed because he wasn't really thinking through some of the situations, but there were other times, such as when he is referred to as Gollum. That was hilarious. I was killing myself. Now, all I think of when I think Gideon de Villiers is Gollum. I need to try that trick one day when somebody comes to the door, go and tell somebody, Gollum's here to see you, because that was just epic. Now, the one thing that I had that was left more open-ended was, why did Dr. White lie about Gwen being sick? That's never really answered or discussed, but I thought that was one thing that I was curious about. Does anybody else have any theories with regards to that? Why did Dr. White lie? Did he know that Mr. Whitman was Count St. Germain? I don't know. And it makes sense why Mr. Whitman was pushing to get things done on the correct days. Now, we find out at the epilogue that Paul and Lucy are going to have another baby, and I thought that was really cute. You find out they're going to have a son because their last name is Bernard. And I thought that was interesting because the entire time I was thinking something is up with the butler named Mr. Bernard. And you find out that he is actually Gwen's younger brother. You're assuming that. Um... When he's actually born, he's Gwen's younger brother. But in the ages, because he was born in the past, he is actually older than Gwen. And it makes sense why he comes out and he rescues her in different situations. And I really enjoyed getting to see that even though she doesn't know who he is until later on, she actually can connect with him. He's protected her this entire time. And it would have been really nice to see them connect in a brother-sister fashion after they had found out. The story kind of just ended and I kind of wanted more. It's one where I would have liked more books written in the series, but I understand why the author only wrote three. As I said before, it would have been nice if the author had fleshed out different areas of the book a little more than she has done with this, but I understand she wanted it as a trilogy and she did a really darn good job making it into a trilogy. Now, the last thing I want to discuss is I knew that it was a chronograph when they found out the size of the area and that it was a box that was put into the wall, but I didn't clue in until they mentioned it had a lock and they didn't know where the key was that in actuality, the key was on Lindsay's neck. And I figured that out before everybody else, at least the other characters in the book. That is my thoughts on Emerald Green. Let me know if you have read this book and if you enjoyed it. Let's discuss it in the comments. My thoughts on the complete series is that this is a very addictive series. It's very well done. And for a translated work, I really enjoyed it. Now, one thing I want to state with how much I enjoyed this series is the fact that I actually have two copies of this series. I have my paperback copy, which I need to get the last book when it comes out in paperback, and I have it in hardcover as well. That is everything, guys. Let's discuss in the comments. Please, let's discuss this in the comments because I cannot stop fangirling about this series. So, without further ado, go and pick up a random book and read. Merry Christmas, guys.